Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Chipstock Investor. It's Friday. Nick's got his flamingo shirt on, which is totally inappropriate for the weather. I don't know how or when Flamingo Friday got started. It's been silly, fun. Maybe we'll keep it rolling in 2024. Maybe we'll even have some Flamingo Friday merchandise. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe Casey knows. That would be super cool. We'll have to think about that. Today, though, you're just going to have to suffer in that short sleeve shirt in the cold. We're here today to talk about our top chip stocks for 2024. But let's start with our last video when we briefly discussed air test systems, ticker symbol AEHR, which you will not find on this list that we have here today. Had a couple of really good questions, though, about the possible cut to the company's full year guidance, which was $100 million. So, Nick, is this a possibility? Yes, absolutely. We discussed this after On Semiconductor's last earnings report. Remember, On Semi represents... 80 to 90% of air test systems revenue. So it, we're at the start of a new downturn for the auto slash industrial chip market. So yes, when air test systems reports, hopefully by the end of January, we're eager for an update from CEO Gain Erickson and the top team. A cut to that full year guidance is absolutely possible which is why we said in the last couple of videos, we've discussed air test systems, why we've started to rebuild a position in air stock. Started to. So look, folks, mini rant here, but we do appreciate the healthy dose of skepticism that's suddenly struck the, the air shareholder base. That's good. But here's where we have some concern. When we struck a cautious tone on air stock uh, at the end of the summer, we were called out on the carpet. Some investors were talking some nonsensical things like Air's subscription-like business model, thanks to the wafer pack sales. Now that things have soured and we're personally interested in investing again after the stock has sold off hard from all-time highs, we think it's a more reasonable, but certainly not cheap price tag. Now, all of a sudden, we're getting numerous questions about the timing, concerns about the business, Here's the point. This is a cyclical business. It's tied very closely to manufacturing and industrial markets. If you're feeling high when everyone else is high on the stock and then low when everyone else is very low, you're doing this wrong and setting yourself up to consistently lose money. You can't buy high and sell low. That's the opposite of what we're supposed to do, especially with a cyclical business. So again, I'll just reemphasize this. We started rebuilding a position in air after we sold out of it late this past summer in the high 40s. But we are rebuilding that position cautiously. This is a small cap stock. And as such, it's a small position. It's part of our basket of small cap stocks. So stay tuned for more details. All right, enough said. Let's talk about the 2024 chip market. Let's get up to speed on where we're at right now, Casey. So in the past, most of the various end markets for chips like PC, laptop, data center, and enterprise industrial moved in tandem with each other. The cycles were tied at the hip. When sales were up in one area, they all were. When a cyclical downturn hit in one place, they all went down. But chip end markets are specializing and the industry is getting much more complicated. Plus, with the pandemic, along with some new emerging secular growth trends, think generative AI or the digitalization of cars, has decoupled these markets from one another. The moral of this story is that we do need to be cautious for the first half of 2024 in enterprise compute and industrial and automotive chips. For enterprise compute, which is non-data center and non-AI, the downturn is still going strong. For reference, you can watch our Marvell video that we recently did on this. And as far as industrial and automotive goes, a new downturn is just beginning. And it's said to be possibly lasting through the first half of 2024. You can see our latest video on on semiconductor regarding this. Well, so maybe just a little bit of a side point here, but uh, another reason to be cautious, there's been a proliferation of semiconductor content research coverage since we started this channel in late 2022, which at the time, no one wanted to touch semiconductor stocks. 
That story has changed. Now some of our favorites, some of which were relatively unknown or completely unknown and underfollowed companies are now touted as like top stocks from media outlets and, and other various research outlets. So now we're feeling just maybe, I guess, a slightly bit contrarian on this. So we want to dig a bit deeper than what you'll find from many of our peers and followers and some people just trying to, I guess, maybe show up to the semiconductor party after it's already been well established that this is infrastructure for the new digital era, the foundation of the next bull market, so on and so forth. Be cautious out there, folks. Don't just automatically crowd into everybody's favorite stock just because everybody else is buying. So with that said, Casey, let's start with our top picks, at least for the beginning of 2024, kicking off 2024. These are businesses that we have high conviction in that we think will make money in 2024. They have a combination of good growth prospects, profit margin expansion potential, and trade for a reasonable valuation given that combination of good growth and margin expansion potential. We'll use our industry flowchart for each stock to point out where it fits into the semiconductor supply chain. And then just a reminder for everyone, if you've missed that video or are interested in the chip industry flowchart manual, you can find that on our Kofi page in the link below. Gotten some great feedback on that. Check it out. You'll also notice on this list that we took a breather from chip fab equipment stocks. We still like them very much, especially ASML, Applied Materials, ticker symbol AMAT, LAM Research, ticker symbol LRCX, and all the metrology players. Think KLA, Onto Innovation. But it was an epic run, and the first half of 2024 could be lumpy. We will continue to have lots to say about these companies going forward. With that, let's start with our joint picks. Our first one is none other than Qualcomm. Looking at our semiconductor industry flowchart, is Qualcomm a IP licensing and royalty business, an IDM, integrated device manufacturer, or is it a fabulous designer? Actually, it's all three in one. Qualcomm is primarily known for its Snapdragon line of mobile processors, the Snapdragon lineup, which combines ARM processors, graphics, and AI chips into a single package for mobile devices. Even high-end Samsung smartphones and tablets rely on Qualcomm's tech. Leveraging this mobile expertise, Qualcomm is expanding into new areas like cars, which are now data centers on wheels. And starting in 2024, Windows laptops with their Snapdragon X Elite series could become a strong ARM-based competitor to Apple's MacBooks. Yeah, this is our first and our largest market cap joint pick. And I feel like this is our particular intel. It's a rebound story. But we also think it's a real value because unlike Intel, Qualcomm actually never dipped significantly into the red during this last downturn, which was a, a very brutal downturn for the mobile chip and smartphone market. So as a result, Qualcomm remained profitable. There's no real dire need to pivot and rebuild and you know completely flip the script on what it's doing. They've weathered the storm. They've been making good investments all along into new chip trends, like you said, Casey, into cars and possibly Windows laptops. So they could participate in new growth trends along with that rebounding smartphone market. So we still see good risk to reward payoff with this stock. Uh, it was a bit of a dud for us in 2023. It, it underperformed both the semiconductor ETF and most of our individual semiconductor stock picks. But we think that could start to change in 2024. So we're going to give Qualcomm another go here in, in the new year. Number two for our joint pick, Lattice Semiconductor, ticker symbol LSCC. In the world of FPGAs, which are powerful computer chips that you can custom program, field programmable gate arrays, Lattice stands alone as the only dedicated pure play left. After Intel purchased Altera in 2015 and AMD got Xilinx in 2022. Though it's a small company, it's been steadily gobbling up market share under CEO James Anderson, a seasoned veteran from AMD. 
New products are in the pipeline, aiming to leave behind their roots in tiny chips for factories and industrial equipment and dive headfirst into the high stakes realm of data centers. This is a growth story, but also an expanding profit margin story. There's also a bit of software mix in with this company, which is a bonus. And this software is a key element to FPGAs, putting the programmable part into the acronym, making for a well-rounded and particularly scrappy player in this part of the industry. We like it after the big sell-off, even though it's still not cheap. All right. Nice little combo fabulous designer and maybe a little bit of EDA software mixed in. Casey, let's round out our list of joint picks, Silicon Motion, our small cap pick. This is another fabulous chip designer. The love story between Silicon Motion and Max Linear, ticker symbol MXL, didn't have a happy ending. Max Linear backed away from that acquisition stroke before midnight, or actually in this case, maybe it was like a couple minutes after midnight, the deal was supposed to go through. At any rate, we like Silicon Motion, ticker symbol S-I-M-O, one of our small cap favorites. They're forging ahead on their own. They're a top designer of NAND memory. Think of this as an essential translator or go-between interface between the central processing unit and long-term storage, long-term memory of a computing system. But as is with typical with small caps, there's very little moat to defend against big competitors. It's all about innovation, capturing market share, playing offense as it were, not defense. So this is typical with small caps, not much of a moat, but we think Silicon Motion has made a solid go of it over the years. It looks well positioned to benefit from a rebound in a much healthier memory chip market. This looks like a a pretty good value for a small cap uh, to us as we head into 2024. So those are our joint picks, but we do have some that are different from one another. So we'll start with Nick's. He chose microchip and on semiconductor. Tell us why you chose those, Nick. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. I chose these two because things could get real ugly the first half of 2024. And I just wanted to talk more about the the industrial and auto chip downturn, which both of these companies are already feeling the effects from. Again, this downturn is probably going to last at least through the first half of 2024, at least as far as management has indicated. But microchip. Ticker symbol MCHP. There's been this long held thought and belief that Texas Instruments is the best analog and mature chip manufacturing company around, owing to its high and steadily rising profit margins. TI is absolutely a great company. We think it will be very much a part of the very fabric of the chip industry for a long time to come. But we hope we've helped dispense with this notion in 2023. Microchip, especially since the 2018 acquisition of MicroSemi, Microchip has carved out a significant niche in the industrial processor market, or MCUs, microcontroller units. Their total system design approach encompassing both chip and software development caters to customers that are not so fluent in things high-tech. Microchip, a leader in this space, They're an IDM integrated device manufacturer, but they also do some fabulous stuff as well. And of course, the software, we love that combination in a business model. Debt repayment uh, from that merger with MicroSemi is still ongoing, but Microchip establishing itself as a new leader in MCUs, a bit of FPGA business in there as well, other embedded processing work. And of course, that operating profit margin approaching 40%, That is pretty good stuff. It's probably going to take a dip through the first half of the year, but microchip's probably going to remain highly profitable even during this downturn. All right, quick pivot to on semiconductor or just simply on semi, ticker symbol O-N. Under new leadership since 2020, CEO Hussein Al-Khori, CFO Thad Trent, who came over from Cypress Semiconductor after it was acquired by Infineon in early 2020, company that we used to be invested in, Cyprus, we're happy with what they did over there. So OnSemi has been shedding itself of this commodity chip maker from the past. The company's known for power, 
and sensor chips now aggressively pursuing the silicon carbide or SIC power chip market, leading the charge alongside ST Micro, STM, and Wolf Speed, ticker symbol Wolf, and particularly aimed at automotive applications. Uh, this is again going to be another downturn story in the first half of 2024. It's going to be worth watching. We're still building a position in this though, and we'll take advantage of any pullbacks we see during the first half of the year because we see gradual growth and significant margin expansion in the years ahead. Some highly cyclical picks for me, microchip, MCHP on semi, O-N. Casey, what are your two top picks, individual top picks for 2024? I chose NVIDIA and Pure Storage. And of course, NVIDIA doesn't need a ton of introduction from me, but we can place it in the fabulous chip designer portion of the semiconductor industry flow. They conquered the world in gaming GPUs, but then artificial intelligence arrived. And CEO Jensen Wong saw a golden opportunity here. His GPUs were perfect for crunching the massive numbers required for generative AI. In 2017, NVIDIA went all in on AI, and we can say the rest is history. We know what happened in 2023. Today, NVIDIA is definitely the reigning king of GPUs used for generative AI and a bunch of other industries as well. We do think that a cyclical downturn will crop up for NVIDIA, but probably not in 2024. CEO Jensen Wong said that he saw a path to continual growth at least into 2025. So it's too soon to say for sure, but we think NVIDIA could again surprise the market. So that's why it's my number one pick. Pure storage maybe does need a little refresher. We'll file this one under the tech equipment part of the chip industry. They don't make flash chips themselves, but they do purchase raw flash in bulk. And they have seemed to have cracked the code on the extremely cyclical model of the typical memory chip industry. Pure Storage is a leading provider of enterprise-grade all-flash data storage solutions. They specialize in creating modern, high-performance storage experiences that are simpler to manage and more efficient than traditional options. They only use flash memory, which is dramatically faster than traditional hard disk drives and highly efficient. They've managed to reach cost parity with hard disk drives with some of their products. And their software is top-notch and provides a smoother growth and more consistently profitable model for us as investors. So I like this one for the long term. And just as a bonus, Pure Storage has one of the best like color schemes on their uh, investor presentations. Maybe that's what drew me to them. Your draw to Pure Storage goes way deeper than just the logo and color scheme. Okay. We have some bonuses for you here at the end. There's our top seven picks for the start of 2024. And of course, you may be looking at this and thinking, why not just go with the ETF socks, iShare Semiconductor ETF or SMH, the VanEck Semiconductor ETF, perfectly fine. We get asked that question a lot. It's great exposure to all the large cap and mega cap chip companies. So you don't get a lot of exposure to the small cap companies that's why we like picking individual stocks, especially at the beginning of what we see as a pivot in tech trends like this. And our initial batch of picks from just over a year ago, up 140% versus a total return of 89% for stocks and 99% for SMH. This is still exceptional, um, but you know that's why we like to allocate money to some of the mid-cap and small-cap na names because you might get some really dramatic outperformance. But anyways, one more bonus pick besides SOX and SMH, which of course are a great way to get broad-based exposure to this industry. What's the bonus pick, Casey? Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, which if you've watched our videos in the past, we have not purchased this company at all. Why is 2024 a year that we're ready to take a nibble on TSM, Nick? Well, we've seen some positive trends just the last couple of months. Uh, looks like an uptick again in their sales trajectory. And there's some controversy here that we'll just mention up front. Geopolitical risk from China. We think this is incredibly well broadcast these days, though. Uh, of course, these are potential risks. We think this is now priced into the stock, though. 
if China does decide to invade Taiwan, we all have far more to worry about than a simple investment stake in, in TSM stock. So let's talk about the business itself and uh, what's changing for 2024. Taiwan Semi reigns supreme in manufacturing technology, surpassing even Intel in the late 2010s. Intel does hope to leapfrog TSM in 2024, but there still remains a lot of questions to answer. Intel has yet to announce a really big foundry customer, and we think it's because of doubts the rest of the industry has as well. While Intel strives to close the gap with cutting-edge equipment, TSMC remains the undisputed leader, churning out the most wafers and chips, powering everything from our smartphones to supercomputers. Besides that obvious tailwind it's received from AI, TSM will benefit from solidifying of the PC and smartphone market in 2024. And with companies like Qualcomm bringing new cutting edge chips to market and forcing Intel and AMD to up their game, TSMC is the arms supplier that will benefit no matter who comes out on top. Okay, there you have it. I guess we we talked about 10 semiconductor investments at the end of the day. Our three joint picks, two individual picks each, TSM as a bonus, and SOX and SMH, the two semiconductor ETFs, if that's more your speed. Please feel free to share your favorites for the start of 2024 in the comments below with an explanation why, if you want to share, or if you want to disagree with our picks. Again, if you have a well thought out explanation as to why you disagree, share that as well. There's value in uncovering missed info rather than just crowding into uh, the same stock altogether. That's the real purpose of our channel here. It's about education and learning more about this really, really complex industry that is semiconductor design, manufacturing, and that assembly into pretty much everything in the economy these days. Casey and I will have one more video for you to close out calendar year 2023. Probably sometime in the middle of next week, we'll cover our favorite non-chip stocks at the start of 2024, because we do not invest only in semiconductor stocks, of course. So stay tuned. Have a safe long weekend, everyone. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you all very much. And just as a reminder, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have notifications turned on so you also get our comments in the community tab as well. Share our channel with your friends and family if you don't mind. We appreciate it. See y'all soon.